could include what you want the plan to accomplish, any reactions you had to all the big ideas, what your particular big idea should accomplish, and what advice you might have about where to put your big idea. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Two. <laughs> okay. Time to do the report backs. This table looked extremely organized. I think this is a good place to start. Are you guys ready to go right here? Can you be first? Okay. All right, we're going to start right here. If you go longer than two minutes, I'll continually get closer to you until you stop. Longer than two minutes, I promise. Oh, gosh, sorry. I'm Dana. Um, we worked on celebrating the river. Um, and our we had lots and lots and lots of ideas, but... Um, we decided that maybe it was more important to celebrate the water than dread the river, and that there would be lots of ways that that could happen intentionally, um, both around the river and in core areas throughout the community. Um, to talk about multiple interconnections, green space and trails and functionality and water and all the kinds of things so that they're not happening individually, but that they're happening um, sort of across the board for everybody um, and, and in ways that are together. Um, using the river as a magnet, I think we now have developed this fear of it, and if we can create space around it that draws people to it, then it will be a good thing. Um, creating beautiful, usable spaces around water and then intentional use of water 
as an amenity, like where? Woodhaven. Woodhaven, which intentionally started with water and then created a community around it. That's my time. Give her a round of applause. All right. We got Nick here from the Strategic Density Area. All right. So we just kind of went around and looked at different areas that we thought we could uh, have better areas. Um, we talked about downtown hiding the parking and doing more retail on the, on the ground level because there really is no great parking. We don't want ugly parking lots. Um, taller buildings, we're going to have to utilize their space because it's, it's limited. Um, and we want to make it more, a more comfortable place to be with uh, adding trees. Um, lower level signage goes along with that because if you put trees in front of buildings, um, the signage on the buildings, you're not going to be able to see it. Um, hindrances to high density areas, uh, the auto traffic. Um, like on 13th, it's kind of hard to get around. Um, if we need to lower the speed limit, but we got to be careful with that because if you lower it too much, you're not going to be able to get around Fargo as easy as you can now. Um, but we also do want you yeah, to maintain corridors so you can get around easily, but make it so you can more walkable. Um, we do have a lack of trees like on 13th and 25th. It's really open. Um, it's just not appealing. Um, and then we talked about the large billboards, um, how they're not appealing to everything. Um, we did talk about one area in further south Fargo, what was it, 52nd, that there's a lot of, uh, what was it, retail and potential to put mixed use, um, a density area down there. And over by the new high school, I think it, or, what was that? The, by, the, by the Shields Arena has potential for uh, high density area as well. So that's what we talked about. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. All right, he's our reporter for a trail loop here. All right. All right, we had the, we had the trail loop. And uh, we want this loop to show uh, the cityscape of uh, Fargo and also including or having the availability to include West Fargo and Moorhead. Um, uh, we want it to become a very desirable mode of travel that ties in uh, the beauty, economy, and good nature of our three cities. Um, we create desir desirability in um, taking this path through areas of our city that we are very proud of. Um, different neighborhoods um, tie neighborhoods together in different loops and connecting those loops and and also we could take this this trail and connect all the different parks in Mini no this is not Minneapolis this is Fargo um, we can connect all our parks and with the parks that we have we have a lot of of ice rinks around town that are just kind of spotted all over, all over the place and with creating this this path, we can also create a winter aspect in connecting those parks and the ice rinks. And I came up with a cool idea where if you create a path to skate on during the winter, who wouldn't want to skate around Fargo? I mean, it's very impossible, but you can make it happen. But that's a couple of our, idea, our ideas. Thank you so much. All right, from a regional re uh, recreation destination. All right, um, so we had recreation. Um, our three main ideas was to tie in with the trail um, and the ice skating idea. Granted, we all, I mean, we focus on hockey rinks around here. Why not have a downtown ice rink like uh, Minneapolis does, um, free to just the general public for recreational skating, not hockey, I guess. Um, another one would be... Uh, the Shields Arena Center, there is land um, just south of that, which actually our land development class at NDSU is kind of taking on as getting ideas for that and everything right now. Um, building up more of a recreational sports center, um, since there isn't, it's just a hockey rink out there. If we build soccer fields, maybe a track, um, 
an indoor place for recreation due to the fact that winter is nine months out of the year. Um, and then finally, what else do we have? Maybe a theme park um, north of NDSU to involve college students, uh, younger kids, um, get more of a younger generation up there more involved. Thank you. From a complete streets table. All right, Brad. Never sit by a tripod, I learned. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we had uh, signature complete streets and complete streets. And uh, looking at the map that we had, the first thing that we noticed was they didn't really form a network. And we had a real concern about them relating to each other and make sure that they um, formed a network. Uh, we discussed also making sure that we considered Skyway connections between buildings and that we could continue to keep that in mind and work on that. Uh, it was an important consideration to consider the consequences of all these streets, the pros and cons that they would have for businesses along these corridors, that some businesses would thrive you know, in those areas and others would actually be, uh, it would be a negative thing and so that would have to be a major consideration along the planning process. The signature complete street um, that we're looking at there, North and South University, must account for physical interruptions. That is to say there are going to be some things in place where it may not be able to be complete and may have to detour off because of the physical interruptions, underpasses and things, but would still would, would create um, you know, a continuation. You might have to detour but come back and would still be complete. Um, there was a little conversation that the university signature may be too far east, that we needed to find some other north-south options, um, that the railroad should have no at-grade crossings, that there should be a need, that there is a need for more transit. Um, consider, keep in mind that a high percentage of people don't drive, those populations that don't drive and walk or bike for their transportation needs. Um, bike trails on railroad right-of-way, and urban rail cars on the main or alternate tracks were things we discussed. And then we've got a map here, and so we spent some time, you know, really considering um, which would be the complete streets, which seemed to make sense uh, because of their traffic, businesses, the schools that were by them, took into consideration some bike trails. And so that's sort of the, I don't know how well you can all see that, but that's sort of a plan that we were working on. from another density area. Who do we got? All right, Paul. I'm Paul Gly. Our strategic density area discussion first addressed downtown. Uh, the opportunity for NP and First Avenue, First uh, Avenue North to become two-way streets um, so that the what's happening on, on these streets would um, become hopefully the same as what's happening on Broadway. Uh, there is a great deal of potential downtown. There, is, there are some underutilized parcels of land that are fairly large, uh, so density could be increased. Although in other parts of the city, there is a, a shortage of land that should be taken into consideration. Uh, the industrial uses downtown, the large-scale industrial uses, one might encourage them to move away from downtown, but also to consider the benefit of jobs near residential areas. Uh, in general, we suggest a cost analysis to encourage infill development in, um, uh, in Fargo because there are some fairly large pieces of undeveloped land within the city that uh, one should look at for future development. Um, in the strategic density areas, we recommend uh, choice of housing types, but also uh, more dense neighborhoods in general to create a dynamic um, area of the city. A bit of everything should be in each circle on this map, which are the, the density, uh, strategic density areas, um, the various uses. They should be linked with streetcars and bicycle loops uh, for easy transportation. But within each strategic density area, the goal should be walkable urbanism. Scale is really the issue uh, in these areas um, as much as use is. Uh, we asked a question, how many years till the areas with existing infrastructure in the city are filled in? Um, 
what is the appropriate balance between infill development and development on the, on the edge of the city. Um, there are two strategic density areas that we recommend uh, revising. Number one, the one on the north side uh, should move farther north to the north port area. And second, we recommend a new density area around the new Sanford Hospital that's going to be built on the west edge of the city. Uh, we recommend planning for drought in addition to the current planning for, for high water. Um, and we recommend creating initiatives in targeted, designated, strategic density areas so as not to subsidize premature expansion of the city. And in general, the solution uh, uh, to land use and um, uh, architecture in Fargo is form-based codes to replace standard zoning that just requires setbacks, then what you do beyond the setback is nobody else's business. Form-based codes seem to be the wave of the future. Thank you very much. All right, from another complete street table. Mark Weiler. I'm going to talk a little bit about signature complete streets and what we discussed. Um, mainly um, what we discussed is how we can connect east and west or north and south, kind of reiterating what Brad was saying. Uh, initially what we discussed was how we could prioritize the streets that could be actually turned into a complete street and then figure out how we could connect certain neighborhoods through um, a corridor like University or 13th Avenue and which one would, uh, would be the most effective. Um, after identifying some of the streets, um, one of the things that we talked about is connecting the downtown area, which seems at this juncture to operate as a complete street. How can we connect that to the mall area in a significant way in which traffic could, could flow um, smoothly? Um, one of the streets that we talked about in the south of Fargo was 17th Avenue, um, considering that we already have a density of population by the mall area and really expanding that from east to west um, beyond the interstate there, um, underneath on that underpass. And as, what we discussed as one of the issues was that when you get further out south, a lot of the streets are becoming wider, the um, businesses are becoming further off the street, and then you cannot create sort of this cafe atmosphere or something of a more dense atmosphere where people can kind of uh, commingle and feel like they're in a neighborhood. Um, so, I mean, most of our discussion was about how we can basically replicate what we have downtown on Broadway and kind of create a more livable atmosphere in the areas that have become more isolated. Thank you. All right, from another uh, desk recreation table. Uh, our main idea was to use the river as an asset instead of, you know, having it be a hindrance and flooding every year. We needed to try to turn it into recreation or events or, you know, whatever whatever we need to do so that it becomes, you know, a big part of the community that we need instead of something we need to get rid of. Excellent. Thank you. Another river table. Hi, my name is Josh. Uh, our group came up with a few observations. Um, one of them was the first thing that we need to do is really to uh, change the perception of what the river means. Uh, right now, it's kind of associated with flooding and a negative connotation, and uh, it kind of that will kind of work itself out with uh, additional control, be it the diversion or uh, other control measures. Uh, the other observation would be to use uh, the flood control and protection to further a trail system, and they can be developed in conjunction and uh, create a greenway with a chain of parks rather than just a, a trail itself. Uh, and the idea being that we'd be able to flood public land and protect the private land in that, in that idea. Um, and then kind of the third bullet point would be to have better connections uh, from downtown, the Ro Rose Creek area, and then connect and extend the river trails uh, and make them go south of the Fargo Country Club because they currently uh, stop there. Um, and then um, more access during minor flooding events. Uh, this summer it was consistently you know, flooded to about 25 feet, and the trail system along the river was almost impassable most of the summer. So we could, we know that's going to happen. We can accommodate that with um, maybe better trail planning along the river. So. Any 
And what table are you? We are the all season citywide trail loop. And so some things we talked about for having a citywide trail loop was to make sure we focused on winter activities and fall and spring activities since we have such a small um, summer season here. And we talked about, as other groups have said, celebrating the river and how to make these um, systems work together and overlap. And we talked about uh, making these systems more efficient, um, making connections more to where people live, to where destinations such as the mall or going downtown and how people can easily navigate using non-motorized transportation um, that's not along a roadway or a shared roadway, and making them safer, um, such as having lighting, and also for families with young children or um, elderly people, and also looking at where businesses are and helping the economy of the city. And I think I'll wrap that up with that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, another trail group. Thank you. I think you were listening to what we were saying. <clears throat> Excellent. Um, you'll notice on your big ideas map, the dotted green line is the conceptual uh, all-city uh, trail. We looked at a number of things. Of course, year-round uh, is we need to have year-round opportunities uh, and get to our neighborhood nodes. Maybe we do some ice skating in the neighborhoods and connect with trail systems uh, in our growth areas. Also, retail and campus. How do we get these trails uh, to those areas? Uh, secondary trail routes, as was mentioned, uh, much of the summer we saw the Red River Trail underwater. Very unfortunate. So what can we do as a backup when we're planning for our trail system? Uh, also looking at, we considered lighting as maybe a valuable idea, uh, especially this time of year. And then moved into community events. That was a big discussion we had. Uh, looking at outdoor recreation events, uh, bonfires, uh, festivals, all those types of things. And then uh, promoting healthy lifestyles through non-motorized activities. We did talk a little bit about snowmobile activity and such, and we thought, you know what, this is really, uh, we need to push the health piece, and that's a way to do it using this trail system. So that's what we have. Thank you. I think that was all the groups. Give yourselves another round of applause. You did great. Thank you for your input. <laughs> Thank you, Elise. Okay. So from the Connect to the River group, um, I heard about using flood control as a way to connect to the river, to improve access in minor flood conditions, to create beautiful, usable, magnetic connections to the water. In the strategic density groups, I heard about Enhancing downtown first, considering the long-term uh, land shortage, to, do, to be doing cost analysis of what the real impacts are of development decisions, uh, to provide a choice of housing types, and that density nodes should have a bit of everything, and a plug for form-based codes. From the Loop Trail, uh, I heard about beauty, economy, and the good nature of our city. I like that phrase, the good nature of our city. I'm not sure which way it was intended to be used, but I'm taking it as both. Uh, that the connection should be safe, uh, and that this is also about economic development by providing retail connections to the Loop Trail and boosting health. In the recreation destination, um, there could be a downtown ice rink. The important thing is that it needs to be a year-round amenity. In complete streets, it seems that the network is key. We also need to be thinking about the skyways in addition to what's happening on the streets to consider the both positive and negative impacts of businesses along those corridors and to connect the amenities, like downtown to the mall or maybe even smaller scale amenities, to be, cre to be creating livable corridors. Okay, so that's, uh, we're, we're moving now into the last exercise of the night, and I just want to clarify one other point. I had a, a really good question about uh, the presentation and how we moved, getting a little feedback, um, from the presentation to uh, the big ideas, and the question was, well, you talked a lot about the arts, but then that wasn't one of the big ideas. And there are several categories like that, health, environment. And I think the, the way that we're thinking about the plan right now uh, is that those guiding principles and key initiatives are perhaps the chapters. And the big ideas are what tie this all together, and that many of the key initiatives are present in all of the big ideas. So <laughs> the big ideas are something that you might be able to map, 
and the key initiatives are things that you might do to help accomplish a number of those big ideas, if that makes sense. So I think um, we've got now about 12 minutes. You get to spin those beans any way that you would like. Uh, I think you'll notice there are more ways to spin them. There are 37 jars over here representing the 37 key initiatives that you have on your handout and only 15 beans. Uh, that was intentional. Uh, this is in, this is the real point of this is to help us help you understand that there are limited resources and help us understand what the priorities are. So um, Jim would like to give a sign off, but I'd like to thank everybody for coming again tonight. It was really good to see you, and thanks for your participation. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for an excellent uh, meeting. The one thing that I want to bring to everybody's attention when you came in the. Uh, uh, city Commission room tonight, there are nine boards out in the entranceway. And if you get a chance, I really appreciate if you take a look at those. We've got the land use planning class from NDSU that prepared those boards, and they've actually looked at cities across the United States and the world, and they're, they're bringing ideas about things that have worked well on those cities and maybe things that haven't worked so well. And so it might help you in terms of maybe ideas that could be applied to the city of Fargo. So if you get a chance as you're leaving tonight, make sure you stop. I think they're going to have some of the students actually buy those boards so you can ask some questions and hopefully learn a little more about different things that are working across the, the, the nation and, and the world. Last thing, we'd like to collect your note cards if you're willing to let us have them because we'd really like to hear about what you want this plan to accomplish or if there are other things that you want to tell us. Thank you very much.